All right, kids, so I don't see you today, but I am talking to you today, your last day before break. You won't, don't have any homework, right, over break, so hopefully you get some true relaxing, and it's pretty appropriate that I'm going to do a snow problem since uh, hopefully we get some snow and some more breaks uh, by with snow days after uh, sometime during this winter. So this uh, problem was in 2010. It was question one, so you have your calculator, so please make sure you also have your calculator out. These problems, we've started to see one like this now as one of the six, usually either number one or two now because it's with the calculator. And there's a couple of twists to them. It's not that you don't know the math or that the math is particularly hard. It's just like some kids don't even understand or recognize what's being asked of them. And the first twist that we noticed in these problems was that they defined rate equations without derivative notation. Only with the words at a rate and with the units cubic feet per hour. So as soon as you see those things, you need to say to yourself, self, this function I'm looking at, it's a derivative. And the units are cubic feet per hour and it's a rate of snow accumulating so adding snow right so you wake up it's been snowing while you're sleeping you wake up ah yay no school and then you see um, you see right but somebody you know I gotta go I wanna go out I gotta shovel the driveway so at 6 a.m. yeah right you go out and start taking snow away, but remember snow is also still falling. So the rate, here's another, right, rate. G is a derivative. How do I know? It tells me the rate of this function is also in cubic feet per hour. So G is also a derivative, and it's in cubic feet per hour. And this is her taking snow, Janet taking snow, away. So what happens is from 0 to 6, she's not shoveling, right? So the rate of change of the snow being removed is 0 because she's not shoveling. Then even though snow is still falling, she has a rate of change of 125 cubic feet per hour for one hour. And then she starts to slow down, right? Because shoveling is a bit of a dagger. You do get tired pretty quickly. She's a beast for going that far, going that long at 125 cubic feet per hour. And then she slows down a little bit for the next two hours. So when you look at the first problem, problem A, look at the units they're asking you for. How many cubic feet of snow? How do you get cubic feet of snow when you're given, the two functions you're given are cubic feet per hour? What do you do? Hmm, I wonder. To get from cubic feet per hour to cubic feet, you need to multiply by hours. What operation do you know that multiplies y units times x units? Integration. So the very first thing is just you recognizing you've got rates, what kind of units you have, and that you need to integrate which function? Accumulation of the snow, right? Who is that? F or G? And what are your limits of integration? Right? Before she started shoveling, which is time 0 to time 6. Don't integrate this. Now, F of T has already been defined. 7T times E cosine T. You don't have to write it again. You math 9 this. and you get 142.123 places past the decimal. That's a 2, that's a 7, and the last digit is either 4 or 5, it doesn't matter. And you can of course give me more decimals if you want. And this is cubic feet of snow. The unit, the rubric, and I'm just going to do the rubric right along with it as we go, 
Part A was worth two points. One point was for the integrand. I'm sorry, the integral. One point was for the integral, which would include the limits and the integrand. And then one point was for the answer. One point only. That you have to have the numerical val value to three places past the decimal as well as the units to get that. So let's move on to Part B. Part B, again, what are they asking you for? Find a rate of change. If they're asking for a rate of change, what units are they after? A rate would be cubic feet per hour. Well, you've got two functions that give you cubic feet per hour. So what do they want the rate of change of? In or out? Hmm. They just want the volume. Well, wait, they want the rate of change of the volume. So they don't want volume. They want the rate of change of the volume. But wait a second. At 8 a.m., the snow has been falling from midnight to 6, but it's also being shoveled for two hours. So how are you going to do this? That's right. You do what you need to do is have the rate of the accumulation of snow minus the rate of shoveling. So that would be F of what? 8. How much the rate of snow, the rate of the snow being accumulated at 8 minus the how much sh snow has been shoveled by 8 a.m. And that is going to equal cubic feet per hour. So what do you have here? How are you going to get f of 8? f of 8, right? Use your calculator. Calculator and plug in 8. You know, hopefully you've put this equation maybe in y1, right, to math 9 it. So now you're just doing, you're not doing math 9, you're just doing what is y1 at 8 minus, how do you get g of 8, right? g of 8 needs to be here, right? So when you plug in g of 8, you don't use this rule. You don't use this rule, but you use 108. And what do you get out of this is negative. What does that mean? Right, the rate of change is negative, so that means the snow is doing what? On the driveway. Right, decreasing. I mean, I hope it's decreasing. But notice it's decreasing at a rate less than she's shoveling because the snow is still falling. This problem, this um, point value, was only one point. It's only one point because really this was just reading and using your calculator. And there was one point for the answer. If you, they, if you already lost a point for units, they won't take another point off for units. But if you haven't lost a point for units and you forgot units here, that's where you'll lose it. Okay? And you'll lose the whole answer point. All right, C is where we got to do a bunch of work. So we decided to call these problems, our title, since there was no official objective for this, we called these rate problems, but they were in out rate problems because there was always an issue of which you know and you'll see this as the problems the, the other problems that we give you there's they give you rates and the rate and what's the twist about that is that the rates aren't labeled with rates like when you look at the cubic feet per hour the only reason you knew it was a rate because the word rate and the units right they didn't they didn't label this 
with any derivative notation, so you might not think of this function as a derivative. So that was the first twist. And then the second twist was, twist was that there are two rate equations, right? This is snow, if you want to think of it as coming in, and this is snow going out. So as you saw in part B, we had to use a combination of those functions in order to answer the question. Now let's look at what they want in C. They want us to get a new function h that, rem that represents the total amount of snow in what? Cubic feet. So again, we've already talked that to go from what we're given, which is cubic feet per hour, how to get cubic feet, we have to integrate. Right? This process is integration. They want us to express h as a piecewise function with a domain of 0 to 9. So, and let me erase what I have here so far. What they mean by that is given g, they want us to be able to write h as a piecewise function. And we're going to have the same intervals. So we just need to find a rule. If this is the derivative, remember this is the derivative, we need to go backwards. So think of this, right? I, so I've drawn a little graph here with my rates, right? This would be g. g of t units are cubic feet per hour, and the horizontal units are hours. So I drew my derivative graph. Right? This is a height of 0, this is a height of 125, and here is a height of 108. So this goes back to stuff we learned right, earlier on. Right? Given the graph of a derivative, what's the graph of the original look like? Right? Well, if each one of these is a constant piece, right? what's the, if, if your derivative is a constant, where did it come from? What kind of graph did it come from? That's right, a linear function. So what, let's see if we can kind of figure, let's see if we can gather data to now get some values. What's true at time equals zero, right? At time equals zero, how much snow has she removed? Nothing, nothing, honey, right? And that's represented here by this constant function. What is, right, what is the product of feet per hour times hour of this constant function? That's cubic feet, right? So, and didn't we do that for, right, didn't we do that for that whole time interval from 0 to 6, right? So isn't it true then that from 0 to 6, the function representing that would be what? 0, right? So the same as right, to represent no snow. But now if the rate of change is 125, right, this is 6. What's true at 6? So stop the zeros. Isn't it true that at 6, at time equals 6, she still hasn't, right, she's just starting? So right here, think of this as, I know this is kind of a, the really, really thin rectangle, right, doing gram. Isn't that 125, height of 125 times 0? What about at, like, 
6.2. I mean, I know we can't do that exact, but isn't it true that at 6.2, because remember, this is 7 over here. What's true at 6.7? What is the product of delta x times the height of 125? Isn't that 125 times 0.2? Right? And then as you keep going on, isn't it, you know, what if I what if I do 6.4? Right? So let's say 6.4 is right here. What is the cubic feet per hour times hour, which means cubic feet? How much snow has she shoveled now? Right? But that's starting at 6. Remember, we already took care of 0 through 6. So how do I write a rule? Can you see that my, my rule is going to be 125 times what? It's not just times 0.2 or times 0.4. It's time what? How do I get this? Because this number is 6.2. This number is 6.4. But I, I want it to be times 0.2. So how do I represent that? Yes, whatever your time is, like 6.2 minus what? 6. Isn't that a linear function with a slope of 125? What about next? What, what, what next? Right? Let's now go to 7. Right? At 7. Right? At 7, what's my rate? Well, I've got a hunt, right? What's my height is 108. My height is 108. And then my delta x is 0. So wait a second, though. 108 times 0 would be 0, but I, she shoveled more than 0 by, the, by 7 a.m., right? Because all of this blue stuff happened, right? We went from 6.4 to 6.8 to 6.9 to 6.99 to 6.9999 to 6.999. So, so just because my rate changed, that doesn't mean my snow goes back to 0, does it? But 108 times 0 is 0. What the... Oh, you have to add how much you accumulated before that, right? And each time, right, it's that 125, right? Times 125 times that one hour, right? Because the whole rectangle was 125 times 1. So now your rate changed. So, right, your delta x was 0 right here at 7, but as soon as you go to what? 7.1 or 7.2 or 7.3, whatever this is, right, at times 7.3, your rate is 108, your height of that rectangle, times 0.3, plus 125. Now how do we write that rule up here? Sure, that's 108. But again, how do I represent that? I can't just write t.3. It's 7.3. So how do I get that? I get t minus 7, right? So that's 7.3 minus 7. Oh, I've done a terrible job at space management. But this, all this green, every time you do a green, what do you have to add? Whoa, that took me some time. See, part A and part B can't take a lot of time. Part C took me some time. So I'm going to erase all of this so that I can 
write the rule a little bit neater since I was so terrible with my space management. So H of T is equal to a piecewise function where the rate of change is zero, so the amount of snow you get is zero. While she's still sleeping in her bed, doesn't even know it's snowing. But then, right, this slope of this is zero. At zero. But then from the hour six to seven, her rate of change is constantly 125 so a linear function with a slope of 125 t minus I'm starting not at 0 but at 6 and that's going to be from 6 to 7 then when I jump to the seventh hour my rate drops to 108 so the slope is 108, t minus 7 this time to get my appropriate delta x or delta t. But I have to add the amount of snow I shoveled between the hour 6 and 7. I mean, technically, this is plus 0, right? Plus the amount of snow I snubbed on <laughs> Janet or me shoveled between midnight and 6 a.m. So the rubric for this question, the rubric for this question was only three points. And the three marks were for, shocker, each of the three rules. Right? It didn't, there was no point value for the time intervals, just really whether you had zero so there's one out of two points get it right a slope of 125 and a slope of 128 maybe you didn't get the t minus 6 or t minus 7 but if you got both 125 and 108 here I bet you get one of those two points <sighs> wow all right let's go on to D what are they asking me for here how many cubic feet of snow cubic feet of snow. So are they asking me to use the rate question or are they asking me to use the, the actual amount of snow? Right? How many cubic feet of snow are on the driveway? Well, wait a second. Check part A. What did you do in part A? Remember in part A, you found there was a hundred and forty two point blah 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 cubic feet of snow after how many hours? Oh, that was at 6 a.m. How did you do that though? You integrated the snow accumulating function. But for the 144 in part A, you accumulated from 0 to 6. Now they want, gosh darn it, now they want the cubic feet of snow at 9. So they want, they want not only the snow fallen, the snow accumulating till 9 a.m., but remember from 6 to 9, what was happening? Snow, uh, You had snow accumulating from midnight to 9, and that is the integral of f of t dt from 0 to 9, but then you had Janet shoveling, but not from 0 to 9, from what? 6 to 9, right? 
So how did we get now? That would, ha that would be integrating this function, but wait a second, what did you just do in part C? So I thought about part A on how to get this one, and then I thought about part C on how to get this one. I have a rule. H of t tells me how much snow was shoveled from 0 to 6, 6 to 7, and 7 to 9. Right? So what do I want to do here? I mean, I could integrate this, but what? no, 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 no. I've already got a rule that gives me cubic feet, right? I know if I integrate this, I get, this is cubic feet per hour times hours. So this will give me cubic feet. But my h function gives me cubic feet. h of what, though? Right? You want to plug in what time? 9. But what do you want to do with these two accumulation of the snow and the shoveling of the snow to get actually how many cubic feet of snow are there at 9 o'clock? What do you want to do with those two values? Subtract. So I am math nining this. minus the function I just had at 9, right? And the function I had at 9 was 108, 9 minus 7 plus 125, right? And what does that equal? On the rubric, this was also worth three points. So remember, part A was two, part B was one, so that's three. Part C was three, so that's six. So part D is three for, remember, a total of nine points. So the points here were one point for this integral, one point for h of 9, whether you write h of 9 or you write h of 9 like this, or you actually get the numerical value, it wouldn't care, it wouldn't matter. You do any of these and get that point. And then again, a point for the answer. If you've already lost a unit point, they would give you this point even if you didn't have the units, but if you had used units appropriately in the other problem, in the other parts, but left off units here, you would lose this answer point. Phew! There was the snow problem. So, another problem that was slightly like this was 2011. We didn't hear as much about the swimming pool problem, which I don't understand because I think it is very similar. But the swimming pool problem, I hope you can also, as you read through it, see why we labeled this and why we called this a rate in and out problem. Because they're talking about a pool. Firstly, it has a shape of a cylinder. Gives me a radius of 12 feet, which they have here and a height of four. The pool contains a thousand cubic feet of water at time zero. And this is the initial condition. Don't forget about the fact that there was no matter what we do, we're already starting with a thousand cubic feet of water at time zero. But then from zero to twelve, water is pumped into the pool at a rate. So once again, here's a function that doesn't have any derivative notation with it, but it has the rate word before it, and the units are in rate units. Again, cubic feet per hour. This problem gives us a table of values for P of T. So in the um, snow problem, they gave us the rate 
as a function, right? E of t, cosine t, or something like that. This time they gave us a table of values. So water is pumped in, but at the same time, water is leaking out. That's why this is a rate in out problem. So in and from rate, capital R, cubic feet per hour. This time they gave me an equation. And look how nice they were. Even though it's a freaking cylinder, you should know the formula they gave it to you. So part A, look at this, MRAM. They're telling you they want three subintervals of equal length to approximate the total amount of water. Total amount of water. Now remember, you've got P of T, P of T, which is in cubic feet per hour, and that's water going in. Then you have out is R of T, which is also in cubic feet per hour. But they're asking me to approximate the total amount of water. Total amount of water. That's volume, and volume is in cubic feet. So again, you have to ask yourself, if they're giving me cubic feet per hour, and they want cubic feet, what do I have to do? Integrate. From when? And they want the total amount of water that was pumped into the pool. So which one of these rates are you going to use? In. So you're going to integrate Do I need to worry about my 1,000? No, that's right. Why not? Because they're only asking you about water being pumped into, not how much was there. You have a calculator. So this, again, this is a Math 9 situation. P of T was already, right? Oh, wait. It's not an equation. It's a table. I can't Math 9 this, silly. I'm approximating it, and I'm approximating it with MRAM, and it's MRAM with how many intervals? Three. So I'm going to have one, two, three values, and a delta T. So look at your table, right? So I'm going to use 4, sorry, 46, <laughs> not 4, 46. And then what's your next one? 57, and then 62 as my three heights. And what is my delta x? Right? Each one of these things, 0 to 4, 4 to 8, 8 to 12, my constant delta t is 4. And I have my calculator, so I get 660 what? cubic feet of water. Can you guess how many points this has? It's right, two. And the point value was given for the Riemann sum and a point for the answer with the units. Now let's look at part B. K 
calculate the total amount of water. So once again, they're not asking me for a rate. They're asking me for the total amount of water. That would be in cubic feet. So how do I get, I'm given cubic feet per hour, and I want cubic feet, so I need to multiply by hours, which means I need to integrate. Who am I integrating? The out function. Who's the out function? R of t was already defined for me, so I can go straight to my calculator this time, and what my limits of integration are 0 to 12. I am just going to math 9 this one. I couldn't do that before, right? Even though I had a calculator, they were asking me to approximate because I didn't have a function up here. I only had values. So you see they're testing both, even that you know, right? They're making you do both. They're clever, these test writers. So I just math 9 this, and I got 225.123 cubic feet, and the decimals were 594. You can, of course, give me more than three decimal places, but you can't give me less. This was worth two points. Can you guess what the point values, where they were associated? You can't just math nine and write a bald answer down. There was one point for the integral, and then one point for the answer. Part C, at least they prompted you this time, right? A lot of times they don't prompt you. They're saying, we had you do part A and B for a reason. Use your information from part A and from, from part B to approximate the volume, not the rate, the volume. So the units I want are cubic feet, which means I'm going to have to integrate the functions I have, and they want the volume in the water in the pool. Not what's leaking out, not what's going in, the actual volume. So this is where you have to do a combo of the in and out at a time 12. So what's the volume of the water Right, going in is the function p of t. And then you have the water leaking out of the pool. So P of t you just found, right? This was in part b. This was your result from part b. This was your result in part a. And if you just take those two numbers and subtract them, you will get an answer that is not right. And unfortunately, this problem is only worth one point. And the point is for the answer. What did I do wrong? I have in, and I am approximating it, right? Because I know this integral is approximated. B gave me the approximate to this. Minus my calculator, what did I do wrong? Aha! You forgot what you started with at time zero. At time zero, how much water was already there? You were adding to a thousand cubic feet that was already there. So, whoops, sorry, I was coming from the wrong spot. Don't forget about your initial condition. All right. D. Find the rate.
that's a derivative, at which the volume of the water in the pool is increasing at t equals 8. All right, that's, that's not bad, right? Find the rate at which the volume of the water, not the volume of the water going in, which is what? The rate of the volume going, going in is p of 8, right? But they don't want just the, vol the rate of the volume of the water going in. They want the rate of the volume in total. So that is in minus out, right? Rate in minus rate out. Now, p of 8, wait, I don't have a function of p of 8. I can get r of 8. r of 8 is just, right, hopefully r is in y1, and I'm just plugging that in, right? And I get that one is, right, right, this is some number. But how do I get, I get from the calculator. But what's p of 8? <laughs> hello, hello, I just go to my table. 60 minus r of 8, and that's 43.242 or 241 units. This is a rate, so it's cubic feet per hour. That part was worth one point. What did they ask you next? How fast? How fast? How fast? What is that? How fast is the water level rising in the pool at a specific time? Hello? Hello? What is happening? Oh, that's unit four stuff, right? That's related rates. Ah! What's happening? Snuck that in there on you, didn't they? <sighs> okay, wait a second. Now, let me let me let me get my get my related rates cap back on. Related rates. How fast is the water level rising? What do I have? I have a cylinder, right? They gave me the volume of the cylinder. Remember, I need to be given a rate and I need to find a rate. Well, gee, I can figure out actually what they're asking me to find. How fast is the water level? What is water level? height, right? So they want me to find dh dt. Look at the equation over here. If I differentiate with respect to t, how fast? If I differentiate, I'll get dh dh dt here when I differentiate, but what the heck is this? I'll get a dv dt. I really hope somewhere they give me the rate of change of volume with respect to time. Hmm. Where is the rate of change of volume with respect to time? Hmm. Where could that be? Wait a second, they're asking me at eight hours. Where have they asked me about eight hours before? Wait a second. This is dv dt, isn't it? Gosh, they're good. Gosh, they're good, these test writers. So after the find step, right, you're supposed to relate, which we did already. Relate V and H, 
Hello, that is the volume of a cylinder. What's true about the, that's too many variables to display, what's, but what's true about the radius of a cylinder, it remains what? Constant. So this is 4 squared. So volume equals 16 pi h. Oops, I'm sorry. The height is 4, duh. The radius is 12, so my bad. 144 pi, right? Sorry about that. 12 is the radius, not the 4, silly. Now differentiate. So take the derivative with respect to time of both sides and you get I'm going to go over here dv dt is equal to 144 pi is a constant and the derivative of a constant times a function h is 144 pi the constant times the derivative of the function dh dt now plug in what do we know dv dt is dv dt is 43.242 you're going to divide that by 144 pi so that you get dh dt by itself and what is that equal to? Oh nine five. What? This is a rate of the height. So what is this in? Feet cubed? No, 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 that's volume. Just feet per hour. Whoa. This problem, this part, was worth four marks. And the rubric gives one point only, which I already told you here, one point only for the derivative, the rate in minus the rate out. Then it gives you one point for the equation relating dv and dt. So that's not this one. That's this one. That is the equation that relates dv dt to dh dt. So that's one point. So unfortunately, a lot of kids are able to get this one point, but they weren't able to get the other three because they didn't see the related rates, or if they did, they weren't sure how to set it up or to import the, the problem, the rate that they had just been asked to find. Then they gave one point for the answer, 0 0.095, and then this problem had a global units point. The fourth point was on having the feet cubed per hour here, but the f and the feet per hour here. So if you didn't have, if you had one but not the other, or neither, or one of the other was wrong, you would lose that global units point. Phew! Alright, so that took a while to go through those two problems. So the substitute has um, so a practice for you to do. I'm not going to check it. You don't have to do it, but it's two more problems that we, that were, we said were rate in out problems, and they were um, those, it's a zoo problem, and then the one on the back was not 
quite, it was from 2007, it wasn't quite an in-out rate problem, but it was an interesting, it still had two rates, but it was kind of a graphical approach. Um, and that was water and a storage tank. So it, it, it really kind of was the precursor to the kind of the swimming pool and the snow shoveling problem. So take a look at those and the, and the rubric that goes with it. See what you can do without the rubric. But if you can't do much, study the rubric very closely along with the problem and see if you can decipher and figure out when do they want, to integ want me to integrate? Do they want me to math 9? Do they want me to approximate? When are they asking me for rates? When are they asking me to combine rates? An in minus an out, an out minus an in. When is there an initial condition that I have to take care of? right? All of these things to think about. These problems are pretty deep. They're the problems that will take you probably more than 15 minutes, which is why some other problems have to take you less than 15 minutes. All right. Have a great break. I will see you in 2019.